So they would not be quite as quick as they are today. And as you can hear, we didn't have the needles that we do today. But we have a gentleman, a firefighter, he is now facing you, ringing the bell to let people know to get out of the way and that they are on their way. So the type of fire with one of these vehicles is a completely different, uh, different game to fighting a fire with one of our modern day appliances. Now the AFS, the Auxiliary Fire Service, was in existence from a, around about 1938 to again 1941 or thereabouts. Uh, during the World War II, it was realised that all of these different fire services had different equipment and went about their firefighting duties in a very slightly different way. So when they all got together, they found it very difficult to gel together. So the government of the day decided that they would um, make the NFS, which is the National Fire Service, and standardise equipment and uh, methods of firefighting. So now you see the uh, firefighters, they're running out. All they had there was the, uh, the big hoses with a, a very big, powerful radial pump on the back of the uh, Austin Heavy unit. They didn't have quite the same control that we do today. We didn't have uh, hoses with uh, the, the nozzles that we call a barrage, had no real control. They either were on or they were off. So when they uh, start their vehicle, their uh, pump, you'll see that the gentleman with his hand in the air is, is, is requesting water. He's asking for the water. Hand up will give us our first command for water and that water will then be delivered by the operator. As you can see, it running through the pipe now, through the hose, and here it comes at full pressure. And it's quite a lot of pressure. That is why there are two firefighters on the hose. Uh, the gentleman, the firefighter, holding the, the branch, the nozzle, and a buddy that will stop him from being pushed back. 
We're calling for more pressure on our homes. This happened quite a lot during the war. Uh, our uh, equipment, there we go. We've got full pressure on both of those, on both of those hoses now. And then we'll attempt to get this fire under control. They need to be very aware of all their surroundings and where they are. So firefighting back in, uh, back in the 40s was a, a slightly different uh, animal as it is today. And of course you may uh, cast your mind back to the films that you may have seen of World War um, action. These guys, they were unpaid, they were volunteers, and they will be doing this possibly whilst bombs were dropping all around them. So it was something of a, a dangerous occupation. Now, an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of incendiary devices were dropped on London and the home counties, and some of them had delayed fuses. So that meant that actually they didn't burst into flame uh, when they first hit but would sit there and would wait until their timers ignited the fuse. That could be anything from five minutes after land fall through to 30 minutes, even a day. So they now need to go into the building to try and make sure that there is no other fire there. But being aware that there may very well be an incendiary device that is on a timer. So the, the stand. Just to let everybody know, I'm getting those tears that come in, they're going to go around, give you a few circuits of it. Okay. Right. Okay. Still in there 
trying to pull a pipe. You know what it's like. But a warm pipe is, uh, is no good to anybody. So they will now position their vehicles so that they can fight and tackle this fire. The Ford Ranger that has pulled up closest has what we call a fogging unit on board. This is a, a fairly new innovation, but really and truthfully it's a little bit like uh, we are now being backed up by our fire rescue unit, the 130 that you saw earlier on. That is now coming into the arena. They've had to come just a little bit further than our Ford Ranger. Uh, Ford Ranger was quite local, he was just there. But the, uh, the 130 fire rescue unit had to do another 200 yards to get here today. So it took them a little bit longer. They will now set in and they will help to establish a safe fire environment so that everybody can get out of that pub, preferably with a pint and some pork scratchings.